Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw this oil pastel Arctic Fox kit. Isn't it great? So precious. All right, so all you need are your paper, pencil, eraser, and your oil pastels, including that one bigger white oil pastel, because you can see there's going to be lots and lots of blending. All right, let's get started. Here's my eight by 10 piece of paper and I've taped it to another board and I found the corners underneath of my tape so that I could measure and find four inches in the middle on this side and four inches in the middle on that side and five inches on the middle on the top and five inches in the middle on the bottom and draw this plus sign. When you draw your plus sign, it doesn't have to be as dark as mine. It only has to be dark enough for you to see it uh, because we don't want to groove in our paper such that when we put the oil pastels on, we'll see a big plus sign all the time. And that could just be a little scary for the Arctic Fox because then it'll look like he's in the crosshairs. We don't want that to happen to him. So we're going to have our plus sign and then we're going to start thinking about where parts are for the rest of our fox. So first we're going to start with the face because that's the part that's going to scare us the most. And we want to create kind of a box about here in that quadrant. So you'll notice that there's space at the top, there's space at the side, and there's space at the bottom. And that there's more space here than there are there. And that it's mostly a square. So we got... That. And again, press gently because you don't want to have a groove in your picture. So you need a square about there. And then we can draw the parts inside. So in the middle of the square, we're going to draw kind of his nose and mouth. So that's in the middle at the bottom. And then we're going to turn this corner into an ear here. And because he lives in the Arctic, inside of his ears are so fluffy furry that you just kind of see all the fur coming together. So it, it looks a little bit like that. Then their heads are so fluffy that the top of his head fills out the square. And then he's got the little pointy face. So we're going to put a little curve there and then kind of balance it out, balance it out. And then the side of his face is going to fit in the square. Side of a face fit in the square. And then we want his eyes nice and wide and open so that we can put delightful color because he's got bright yellow eyes. So first off, we're going to start with minus signs where we believe that the eyes are located. So that way they're parallel to this line and that line. And then they kind of open up like an angle sign there. Now it looks like he's sneezing. Ah, choo! Okay. Um, then we want to put our little pupils there. Uh, now he looks a little angry. So now this side's going to curve up. And this side's going to curve up. And then we just connect over. And then they have that nice, whoops, I touched my pupil and that makes it look mad. So let me see if I can try that again all right i'm gonna do a rainbow to my angle sign not to my pupil and i'd say even if you go out a little bit there now we have like a disney fox because uh, he's got lashes but they do have kind of color on the side of their eyes so you can always google um, your arctic fox and that might be helpful for you all right so that's where his face is and then his back is going to come right out like about here. Now he looks a little bit like a wildcat right now. So we're going to go over to there. So see, I'm a little higher than middle. But remember, I have to count outside of my tape. So it would be okay if we went to the middle. So maybe that's a good place to aim anyway. And then we're going to look at this one. And remember, from here to here. And kind of aim a little to the right of center. 
and we're gonna go over and down right there. So the reason we the reason we do a grid is so that we don't accidentally draw his little butt like that, right? Or his butt way over here. So the grid helps us find where to start and when where to stop. So now we've got his back over there. Now we get to do all four of his legs and a tail. So I have positioned him in our eight by 10 square so that we can see the whole tail. And so what we wanna do is find the bottom and go up about an inch from the bottom of your paper, no matter where it is in the tape. So mine's about there, about there. And you can use a ruler or you can use a piece of paper, any straight edge to draw how deep the snow is where he's walking here. And so that will be how deep my snow is. So I just need a little snowy bit at the bottom because if I have him stepping way down here, uh, then his legs will be too long. So we got that. He's low to the ground. He's very fluffy. He's gonna stay nice and warm. All right, so this is the midline and it just so happens that one of his toes touches that midline. So we can go ahead and put a toe there. And then we're gonna find the middle this way and another toe is there. So kind of look like ice skates. All right, then we're gonna find the middle here and we have a toe in the middle there. And then we're gonna go out in front and put another toe there. So one, two, three, four toes or ice skates. And then the tail is going to be aimed right at your corner over here. So it's kind of a diagonal shape, kind of a traditional fox kind of shape. So we will connect from here, kind of fluffy to that top part. But we're not gonna draw the bottom yet because we need the legs first. All right, so this leg right here is the one that's closest to us. That one's on the far side. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna have a vertical line that goes to the right of his face. So we got, there's our letter L, okay? And then we're gonna do a tummy that's parallel to that line and goes a little bit farther than the middle there, okay? Then they have like wide toes, like their feet aren't like little paw feet, they're like long toe paw feet so that they don't fall through ice and stuff. So it kind of looks like they have to wear um, size 14 extra extra thin or something, okay? Because we got these toes sticking out. So we're gonna go up. So we got that kind of thing. And I'm not gonna go all the way up to the line. I'm gonna go a little farther than my middle so my little fluffy chest can be on the other side of that. So we got that leg in position. And now we're gonna come over to our square. I probably should have erased my square by now, but I got so excited about the other parts that I didn't. All right, so let's erase my square out. There we go. Because now I can go from here, do, 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 down and over to that line there. And then I can start here and come down over for that foot. And this one will just kind of copy it. All right, so we got two legs, we got a face, we got a body. All right, so now our toe that is here. So this part right here, you might have to draw more than once um, but remember, their back feet look different than their front feet. So let's go back to this one because he's taking a step. So we're going to have it going up. Um, now, this is the whole distance of our paper. But we want to look at this distance between the new line that we drew in here and kind of go about halfway because then that's that little heel that they have, right? So then this will go up. But you don't want to get too squeezy close. And then we're going to do that nice curvy, there's his hips. See, right? There's his hip. Okay. Um, and then he's so fluffy that we don't see the space between the back of his foot and his tail, but we can kind of see the shape of his tail. So we'll just do that. And then we'll do that to there. And that shows the big fluffy tail. One, three legs. Now we get to do the last one. So this one is, he's kind of crawling. So this one will go up but it's a little bit more that way. And then this one will follow to copy that. And if this is the hip on this side, then that's the hip on that side. All right, so we have all of that stuff. 
And so now we can erase the plus sign. All right, we have our Arctic Fox kit now, and it looks so cute. I've erased the plus sign, I've erased more of the square. And if you did the snowflake project with us last month, you know that we're not gonna use Sharpies, we're gonna use oil pastels. And that with this project, I was doing something a little different. We are going to now, now make sure you like it first. Now that you've got it the way you want it, we're gonna press really hard on the fox lines themselves. The ones that we for sure wanna keep. Notice how I'm pressing straight down on my pencil. Cause if I press sideways, I'm just gonna break the whole tip of my pencil off. So if I go down, all the pressure is going down through, straight through the lid. So it's not out of balance. So it'd be less likely to break off while I'm pressing hard. Um, and getting deep grooves that if I close my eyes, I can feel those grooves into the paper of where my fox will be. I think I'm not going to do the ground, though. Let's not trace the line for the ground. Um, I think we'll have a... I've noticed that my plus sign left a stain on this watercolor paper. And so I'm guessing that my line down here will leave a stain without it being a groove anyway. So I'll know where it is. Um, but we'll just mostly look and see where the feet are. And that will be all that we need. And so if you're not sure if you've done it hard or not, you can probably tell by feeling it. So we're going to do that. Deep grooves in the whole thing. Okay, I have traced my whole fox using really a lot of pressure so that I have deep grooves and I can feel it throughout. And I even colored pretty hard on his nose and in his pupils. And I did not trace the ground. So now I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna just erase the whole entire thing. And you will notice that I forgot a line right there. Okay. <laughs> Press, 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 press. Also, don't use the most sharpened pencil in the world to do that because if you sharpen it to a nice point and do that, it's just going to break off anyway. So make sure it's not the most sharpened pencil. So erase, 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 and erase it very thoroughly everywhere. All right, I have been erasing a long time and I'm very happy with the results. So you'll see that my paper is very stained and I have deep grooves. And so because I pressed really hard, I erased and erased and erased and erased. And you can still see our Arctic Fox kit standing right there. You can see it, it's very, it shows up very nicely. Uh, but because we erased very thoroughly, it's not gonna get graphite color mixed in with like your yellows and other colors like that. So it'll be really nice and it won't look super outlined either. So that's good too. And now we're ready to get our 25 color oil pastels out so we can begin coloring them. Yay. Okay, I have my oil pastels and I got a clean paper towel because we're going to start with yellow and the last time I used yellow I got a little orange on it. So I'm going to Twist it in the paper towel, kind of like you're sharpening a pencil, and that's enough to clean off that orange, okay? And then I'm gonna use some pretty good pressure. I'm trying to find any edges that I have, and I'm gonna get those eyes very yellow. Very, very yellow. Which is kind of fun. Um, against all the, the bright white. So I've got my bright yellow and you see I'm kind of tapping it to find those edges and filling it in. And I probably still got a little yellow outside the lines, but close enough counts. And that's all the place we need regular yellow. So I'll put it back in my box. All right, next I'm going to use pale orange. And again, clean off my pale orange. Now there's an artist that I love for animal art and his name is Franz Mark. So here I will add it to our side. Franz Mark. Um, yeah, so look it up. 
it, if you think about the time period he's in, it's pretty interesting because he looks like he's doing cubism before Picasso was very famous. And he does always animals. Animals are his subject and it's pretty cool. He's got some really nice blue horses and he's got some orange foxes and different things like that. But I'm thinking about him because I'm having fun with color while I do this. And boy, he had fun with color while he did this too. Um, this is a little bit more realistic than his though, because his, like I said, look a little bit more like Picasso. So I'm gonna put some pale orange there, pale orange all down to there. Put some on this front side, front side. And kind of this front side of our tail here too. This is really fun to get this color on there. And yeah, I'll put a little bit here, because why not? There's, you really can't get it wrong, you know? It's just a lot of fun to put a lot of color on things, so. There, that looks nice. I'm gonna do it on this leg too, because hey. Yeah, all right. I think I'm done with that color. We'll see. I will put it back, but I'll know where it is if I want to use it again. And next I'm going to get the yellow ochre color. So again, my twisting it nice and clean. And we're going to get his little feet more of this gold color on his little toes. Little snowshoe feet. And maybe his heel. And the side of his face up there. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the fur. If I do too much of this color, he'll look like a normal fox. So I guess I should be a little cautious of that. And of course, we don't want it to look like yellow snow either. So, because that could be yucky. So, okay. All right. I'm going to put the yellow ochre away. Um, no, oh, I can't help it. I'm going to use their mac and cheese color. So this is the glowy orange color. I like it a lot. I'll put a little bit on my, so basically I went on my eyes. I went where my pupils were, but I didn't go all the way into the corners where the yellow is in the corners because I like that brightness and it's so nice. I'll put it, I'll put a little here. So again, I have to be careful that I don't turn it into a regular fox. All right, we'll get rid of that. No more fox colors. Okay, next, pink. Pink is not a normal fox color. That'll help, that'll help. Um, so I'm gonna put some pink here, pink there, get some pink up here on the top. Now we're talking very delightful. Pink up there. No one would expect that. back side. Now I'm using kind of warm colors right now. Maybe you're like, I did the snowflake and I learned that there are warm colors and cool colors and that I could do either warm colors or cool colors wherever I wanted. And maybe you would like a cool color fox and I don't know, warm color background. Whereas I'm kind of going with the, the warm color fox, maybe a cool color background. I don't know. I might just mix it up. I might not stick with warm and cools. But anyway, that's an idea because obviously I'm not being overly realistic about this particular picture, um, but it's still gonna look cool as you have seen already from the picture. Okay, so I like the pink. I'm very happy with all the pink in there. I might put a little more on the back legs here to put it in the back. All right, okay. So purple, let's do purple next. Purple is kind of, I'm kind of going in rainbow order a little bit. And I put some purple inside of those ears. I'll put a little purple up above my nose. All right, I will say this is very important for oil pastels and blending and stuff like that. The black one is messy. I know they all seem messy, but the black one is really messy. So don't do the black one yet. Please, 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 please wait. Wait on the black one um, and do just details with black at the end on top and you'll have better success. Trust me, better success. Uh, so a little purple there, a little purple there. 
um because once you put that black stuff on it just gets into everything so yeah so wait on the black wait on the black a little purple there maybe some purple there it kind of looks like a lion and we'll do that back side with purple okay mm -hmm. You know, if I drew this picture tomorrow, it would be different because every day I draw something. It's just my impression that particular day. I'm going to put some purple on these eyelashes. Uh, so know that there's no one right way to do it. Um, again, I always give you like a little recipe, a little lesson because um, it's fun. And it's, it's, it's also fun to be told what to do sometimes so that you can aim for a certain thing. Uh, but there's more than one way to do this fox. Okay, so I got purple on there. And, um, all right, let's switch to the light blue. Okay, and let's put a little light blue kind of under him down here in the snow. That will be in his little shadow. So that's where that line was that we didn't press with our might. But I'm also going to put light blue on him. So there and on his little bridge of his nose so there I left the idea of warm and cool colors because I just put it on him so it's done now can't get it off of there and that's okay I'm fine with that and I'm gonna do more there okay I think I'm going to go a little farther down his shoulders with some hair there. Okay, I like that. I do like that. All right. I would like the background to have kind of a brightness to it, though. So I'm going to let this land here. Oh, I got cleaned it off a little bit. I've got some pink on there. Not that that would be the end of the world. I'm just going to do a little smush. I'm using the side... If it had not been unwrapped, I could do the flat down and probably get those bumpity bits for the sky. So I'm using very little pressure. I just need some tone back there. Because now we have an Arctic Fox in a snowstorm. <laughs> okay. It's more than what we expected, right? All right, so I'm, can you see those little f flecks of color on the bumps of the paper? Yeah, okay, that's good. That's what we want. Okay. Oh boy, oh boy, Prussian blue. You knew it, you knew it was coming. All right, so I'm gonna put some Prussian blue in the Ys on his ears there. And I'm afraid to do too much. I'm gonna do his little tip of his tail. Little tip on his tail under his little feet yeah okay actually around his ears is pretty dark go around his ears and we can start to see the valley valleys of where we pressed really hard and that's okay so don't worry about that Do -do 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 -do. I'm very pleased with this okay and maybe some gray. She's got gray in her box, right? Put a little gray marks there. And a little gray there. A little gray under his little chin. Not too much gray, because then he looks like a dirty fox. We'll do it on the, the back of his leg there in the front. The back of the leg there. Okay. So I think that's enough colors for me. I don't think I need any more. Um, but if you want, you could do more colors. You could do more peach. Um, you could do any color you want. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with this. So I'm going to stop there. That's enough color for me. And now we're going to get our single white crepe that's pretty thick. And so this is the other half of the one that I used last month for the snowflake. And I'm just going to start... Uh, coloring things white. Now, what I do not want you to do is don't go over the whole thing because you're going to lose the lines. You still get to color inside the lines even while pressing hard. Um, so 
stay inside those lines because otherwise it's going to be pretty tricky to know what it is later because we're just blending it in the shape and so since the tail would go in that direction i want to blend it in the tail's direction right and since the feet would go in this direction i'll go this way and then they'll go up so you want to follow the direction when you blend so let's do the whole body first and not do the background because we'll be tempted to do the background oh you know what that's lovely my white had a little green or something on it hmm well when you look at my picture and you're like she didn't tell us to use green but there's some green there you'll know it must have been on my white um, and i am not unhappy about it all right what i want to try to do is really cover that plus sign because it just happens to be in the part of my fox that doesn't have a lot of color so i'm gonna have to use more blending to pull up the color from the tummy to get there. And we'll get his little back leg. Maybe, oh, maybe the ochre in the Prussian blue made some green. Or the gray and the yellow made some green. It's pretty nice. All right. Do, 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 do. I'm glad I don't do this all the time, all the time, all the time, because my fingers would be really sore from pressing hard with the white on it. But it's worth it for just like one a month or so. Oh, that was cool. Okay. Oh, I'm getting close to his face, which could be a little scary. Uh, let me do inside my ears first. So around my blue ears, the top of my head. You can see I'm kind of thinking about the direction. I'm going to go across my forehead, down to my nose. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna go inside. So notice he doesn't have a nose or a mouth yet and he doesn't have the outline on his eyes yet. So I'm gonna go under the eyes, under the eyes. It's almost more like painting than coloring because your direction helps it look, helps it take form. So you can see it got that going that way and that way. Now I can go under his little muzzle down here on his chest. Very cool. Yep, very cool. Out for his little fluffs. Okay, I'm gonna go on his ears more because that was pretty bold. All right, so that is the fox itself. Now there's all these little strudely guys on there. And that's okay, you can just tap them off like this. And then kind of move them away so they don't get on the back of your stuff, right? Um, and yeah, so that's okay that they're on there. And next we will work on the background. Another thing, before we do the background, I didn't put white on the eyes. So I did that on purpose because I want them to have like kind of this bright look. But if you do want your eyes to have like a white look, you'll have to go just inside a little because if you go out bigger yeah i mean it doesn't really help one way or the other um but you can get a lot of this color on the face and it's probably better if the face doesn't have uh, the orange as much so that the eyes will stand out okay next we've put our light blue color in the background a little bit to tone it before we blend it because this is going to be our arctic scene but i decided to go ahead and get our cobalt blue and kind of make it more cobalty around the edges. So near to the tape. So it's almost like it's night, he's popped out and there's a flash or something on him and we can just see him brightly in the middle. And then it's kind of dark around the edges there. So that's good. And then I'm gonna put some of this in the shadow under him. Yeah, like that. And all right. So now I will take my white and I will start using a lot of pressure on the background. So blending that in very thoroughly. And oh, that looks really good. And we're gonna do that all back there. All right, I've blended the whole top background, but I haven't blended from here down just yet because I was thinking 
as I was blending this part, uh, that one way to make it stand out a little better might be to have some purple in our shadow. So we had the blue, we had the pale blue, we did the cobalt blue, and I think I would like to put a little of the purple in this shadow as well. So that will set it apart as being a bit different than the other. And because we did light blue with the dark blue around the edges, and we've got that there, I think I'm instead of the dark blue, I'm going to put the dark gray close to my tape edge down at the bottom snow where he's standing. All right, so that's just a little extra. And now, blendy, 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 blendy. Blend. I'm going left and right because this is where the snow is packed down where he's walking and that will look really good to have that blended on top all right so now we have a nice blendy blendy scene and you're like oh it's very blurry miss elaine yep i know that's how it's supposed to be right now it's gonna be okay um because remember they're camouflaged for a reason they're trying to hide so we've got it all like that, and maybe I shouldn't have gone back there after being on a different color. All right, so we've got all of that. Now I told you, make sure you got everything that you like just the way that you like before you do any black stuff. So I'm pretty pleased. I don't see anything I want to do. All right, so I'm going to get my pencil back again. Come out, pencil. All right, and so I'm going to start by just re-outlining the eyes with my pencil. Good job, pencil. And then we're going to re-outline the nose and get the little mouth. Oh, that's cute. And we can get a little pupil. Very nice. And I'll go ahead and color inside my little nose. All right, and then we can get a little, got little toenails. Yes, he does. Toenails. And he's walking that way, so his toenails will be that way. All right, because you just can't get the same level of detail with a crepe off that you can get with your pencil. So it's probably good to just add those details with your nice 2B pencil. Get those little 2Bs. And then we've got the dark color at the tip of the tail that they have. And then if you want, you can do little, loose. It's so beautiful. Little loose furry bits. This is fun. But you didn't know you could do it right on top of the pencil. But I'm on top of the oil pastel, but you can. And it looks beautiful. Fluffity, fluffity. Remember, that's his little dancing hips there, his little foot, his tummy, other foot. Uh, and remember, somebody else might teach you something different, so they maybe wouldn't do this, but I love this. So, um, And you can decide. Maybe you liked it better before the pencil got involved. I don't know. So you have choices. You can add some shadow under his feet. Under his tail. Oh yeah, under his little muzzle. Oh, that is so cute. Okay, my pupils are different size, so I gotta make this one bigger. There. Okay, now that one's bigger. Okay. He doesn't look unfriendly, so that's good. Right. Let's see if I can put a tiny dot. My crepe pot broke. So let's see. <laughs> That's not a tiny dot. I'm going to use my pencil to help get a little bit of that off. Oh, <laughs> that was more off than I expected. All right. I'm going to use my pencil to press it back on again. Okay. There. That's good. All right. And that is really what I was hoping for. Uh, it's beautiful. All right. So I'm going to sign it right here. And we get to put 2023 on here. Yay! Okay. Draw first. Let's 
so cute. He's walking. They almost look like raccoon feet, don't they? It's not gonna fall. All right, oh, I mentioned the black. If you really want, I don't like using it because it gets everywhere. Um, you could put a little black on your nose you know, it's pretty dangerous. So I recommend to stick them with your number two pencil. Thanks for joining me today to make this cool Arctic Fox. Fingers are still messy. I probably should wash them first. But just a reminder, when you remove the tape, to remove it low and at a right angle away from your artwork. See you next month.